All right, so on here we have our 30, 60, 90 triangle. So it says a skateboard ramp must be set up to rise from the ground at 30 degrees. If the height from the ground to the platform is eight feet, so here, from the ground to the platform is eight feet. So they actually already labeled it for us here. How far from the platform must the ramp be set? Okay, so they're wanting to see how far from the platform must the ramp be set. So how far from here to here must the ramp be set in order to make that 30 degree angle, okay? So we're looking for this side. I'm gonna put a little question mark here. I'm gonna go ahead and make my table as I always do, since we're working with 30, 60, 90 triangles. We have 30, 60, 90. X, X in the square root of three, and then two times X. Okay, so then we go ahead based off of the information that they give us. So they give us the side that is across the 30 degree angle, which is eight feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that information in here. They give us this is eight, okay. We are looking for this side, okay? This is my right angle right here. So then we are looking for the one that is across the 60 degree angle. So we are looking for this one. Now remember in real world problems, you don't go to the um, the store, or you don't, in real life, you're not gonna be like, oh, well, we're gonna go eight and the square root of three feet away, right? Once we plug in the X here. So we do have to give that as a decimal. Okay, does it tell us what to round to? It doesn't. Eight and the square root of three gives us 13.9. So then the side that we're looking for is 13.9. And then I am going to write that, let's say 13.9 feet. That's it. Okay, the other one we, we're not worried about. They didn't ask us anything about it, so we don't have to find the other one. The next one says find the perimeter of the 30, 60, 90 triangle with hypotenuse length of 28 centimeters. So this time they give us the hypotenuse, which is this one. It's across the 90. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my table. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So it's x, x and the square root of three and two times x. All right, so then from there, they tell us the hypotenuse is 28. So they tell us this one's 28, which is a side that is across our 90 degree angle. Okay, so since that one is across our 90, that one is 28. Okay, so then we're gonna go ahead and have to solve for x. So two x equals 28. We divide by two, and we found x is equal to 14. Okay, so since x is equal to 14, that means that's a side across our 90 degree angle. That means, I mean our 30 degree angle, so that x is 14. So when I put this here across my 30 degree angle is this side, that would be 14. All right, across the 30. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and do 14 times the square root of 3. That gives us 24.2. This is my 60. Now this one does tell me to round to the nearest hundred, so I'm gonna put 24.25. All right, then we're not done quite yet because they are asking us for the perimeter. So when they're asking us for the perimeter, I'm gonna have to, that's not a five. I'm gonna have to add all of these up together. So to find the perimeter, we're gonna do 14 plus 28 plus 24.25, that gives me 66.25. So the perimeter of my triangle is 66.25 and our units are centimeters. All right, the next one says find the area of the 30, 60, 90 triangle with hypotenuse length of 12 inches. Okay, so they tell us the hypotenuse is 12 inches. I'm gonna make my table, 30, 60, 90. X, X in the square root of three and two times X, okay? So then they told us that the one across the 90 is 12 inches because it's our hypotenuse right here. So I'm gonna put the 12 here, which means that we are going to have to solve for X because we don't know what X is and we need to find the other two sides since we're looking for area. We need the base and we need the height. So I'm going to set it up. 
over here, 2x equals 12, and we solve for x, so we solve for x by dividing by 2, and we get x equals 6. So that means this one's 6, and then this one is 6 in the square root of 3. Okay, so now that we know that x is 6, we are going to need these to the base and the height. Remember, your base and your height always make a right angle. So those two. Okay, so to find the area of this triangle, it is going to be 1 half times base, which one of them? 6 times the height, which is 6 in the square root of 3. Now it says leave your answer in simplest radical form. Okay. So all we got to do, first we're going to multiply 1 half times 6 times 6. So half of 6 is 3 and 3 times 6 is 18. So the area is going to be 18 and the square root of 3. Units here are inches because it's area inches squared. All right, moving on. It tells us here the perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 18 meters. Find the area of the triangle. This one we are rounding to the nearest tenth. So since this is an equilateral triangle, remember this is 60 degrees. All of them all the way around. Okay. If I cut this side to get the altitude, which is the height of our triangle, I end up making this angle in here 30. Okay. They tell you that the perimeter is 18 meters. Okay. So then if I do 18 divided by 3, that gives me 6. So that means each side is 6. So 6 six and six. Okay, then I, let's see, we need to do the base of our triangle, which we already know is six, but we're going to have to do the height of the triangle, which we don't know. So I'm going to have to set it up on a table, my 30, 60, 90. So where can I fit it? 30, 60, 90. X, X in the square root of three and two times X. Okay, so we know that the side across our 90 degree angle, which is from this angle here, across from it is 6. So the 6 goes here. Okay, and since 2 times x equals 6, we're going to go ahead and find the other side. So 2 times x equals 6, we divide by 2, and that means x equals 3. Okay, which is this little section right here. But that's still not what we need. We need the altitude. We need the height. We need this piece right here. Okay, so that's the side that is across our 60. And the side across our 60, we have to take our x and multiply it times the square root of 3. So we take 3 and multiply it times the square root of 3. Okay, so now I know that my height here is 3 and the square root of 3. So now I know my base. Now I know my height. I'm ready to find the area. So we're going to do 3 and the square root of 3 times 6 divided by 2 because it's the area of a triangle. Okay. So when we multiply the coefficients, so we multiply 3 times 6. Okay, not the one inside the square root, the 3 that's out here in the front. So 3 times 6 is 18. And 18 divided by 2 gives us 9. Well, it does tell us to round to the nearest tenth. Whoops. So when we do, this gives me 15.59, and our units are meters. Ooh, it's to the nearest tenth, so 15.6. Uh, erase it there. All right. <clears throat> the next one, it says the altitude of an equilateral triangle is 6 feet. Okay. So this is my equilateral triangle. They say the altitude, so this one right here is 6 feet, okay? Remember, this is 60 degrees, and this one's 30 because we cut it in half. Um, then it tells you to find the perimeter, so that means we're going to have to add up all the sides. Because it's an equilateral triangle, that means all these sides are the same, so we just need to find one of them, okay? This side happens to be across the 90-degree angle, so when I make my little table, 30, 60, 90. X, X in the square root of 3, and 2 times X. So then they give us this one that's across the 60. They tell us that that is 6. We need to find the one that's across the 90. So we're looking for this one. Okay, we're looking for this side. 
So then I'm going to have to solve for x in order for me to figure out what that is. So it's x in the square root of 3 equals 6. And we solve for x by dividing by the square root of 3. So x equals, now it does say here simplest radical form, so I can't just put in my calculator 6 divided by the square root of 3. I need to simplify the radical, so first I need to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3 to rationalize it. And I get 6 and the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 9, because the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 gives you a square root of 9. Which, when we take the square root of 9, it gives us um, 3. In the last step, we take 6 and divide it by 3. That gives us 2 squared by 3. Okay. So then because, because x is 2 and the square root of 3, now we can find the side that we're originally looking for, which is the 1 across the 90. All we got to do is multiply it by 2. So we take 2 times 2 and the square root of 3, which gives us 4 and the square root of 3. Okay, that means that this side right here is 4 and the square root of 3. So when they're asking us for the perimeter, P, well, all of the sides are 4 and the square root of 3. Okay, because they're all the same. So 4 plus 4 plus 4, 4, that gives us 12. So 12 and the square root of 3. Our units are P. And that's it. All right, the next one here, <clears throat> so it says find the area of the trapezoid, round your answer to the nearest tip. Okay, so to find the area of a trapezoid, area equals one half, we add the bases together, so B1 plus B2, and then we multiply it by the height. Okay, so that's how you find the area of a trapezoid. So then we look at what's given to us, okay? We do have both the bases, 8 and 11, so that's what I'm going to have to put here instead of B1 and B2. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. 11 plus 8, or 8 plus 11, that gives you the same thing. Um, since we're looking for the area, it's equal to 1 half, and then we have to find the height. Okay, How tall is this trapezoid? So look, this is the height of our trapezoid. And we don't know what it is, okay? So that's what we're looking for. So as soon as we find that, we can go ahead and plug that in. Okay. What they do tell us is that this angle is 60 degrees, okay? So then this side right here across the 60 is what we're looking for in order for us to find the height. Because look, you can see here that they're the exact same length. So I'm going to go ahead and make my table. So I have my, let's see, where can I fit it? 30. 60, 90. <clears throat> x, x and the square root of 3, and 2 times x. And I said that we're looking for the side that's across the 60. So this is what we're looking for. <clears throat> so now we need to see, okay, if we're looking for the one across the 60, well, which one do they give us? Do they give us a 30? Do they give us the one across the 90? Or what information do they give us? So they do tell us that from here to here is 8 which means from here to here is 8 also. But this whole side, all of this is 11. Okay, so I'm just going to erase that. So if I do 11 minus 8, that gives me 3. So that means that that piece right there is 3. Okay, which happens to be across your 30. So x is equal to 3, which means the side that we're looking for is 3 times the square root of 3. 3 and the square root of 3. That's it. So now we're ready to go ahead and plug that into our formula. Now here it does say round to the nearest 10 so that we don't have to worry about leaving it in radical form. I am going to do it just so that we can practice. Um, so 8 equals 1 half. 11 plus 8 is 19 times 3 and the square root of 3. So area equals, I'm going to go ahead and take half of 19. And then I'm going to multiply that times 3, and that gives me 28.5 and the square root of 3. So if they want it in radical form, it would stay like that. But since they don't, it is going to be 49.4. And then our units are centimeters. It's area, so it's squared. That's it. All right. <clears throat> Next here it says the area of the semicircle is 72 pi. Okay, so half of this circle is 72 pi. Find the perimeter of 
triangle QPR. Okay, so first, let's see. They tell us that the area of a semicircle is 72 pi. Okay, so then with that information, I'm going to go ahead and write down what I think the area or the formula for the area of a semicircle is. So area of a circle we know is pi r squared, but we have a semicircle. We have half the circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our area of our circle and divide it by 2. Okay. Now because they do tell us that this is 72 pi, instead of a, I'm going to put 72 pi equals pi r squared divided by 2. And I'm going to go ahead and solve for r. <clears throat> so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 first. 72 times 2 gives me 144 pi equals this cancels, so then I'm left with pi r squared. Okay. I'm still trying to solve for r, so I need to get rid of the pi that's with the r. So I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite and divide both sides by pi. And the pi is canceled. So I get 144 equals r squared. I go ahead and take the square root on both sides to solve for r, and that gives me 12 is my radius. Okay, so the radius of my circle from here to here is 12. So the, if that's 12, that means this whole entire side is going to be 24. Okay, um, so they want us to find the perimeter of this triangle, so that means that we need to find all of the sides. I'm going to go ahead and make my table. I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so it's going to be x, x in the square root of 3, and 2 times x. Okay. They happen to give us the side that is across the 60 degree angle. Okay, so then the 24 is going to go here. So I'm going to write 24. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for x now that I know x in the square root of 3 equals 24. We go ahead and solve by, oh, where should I put this little button? I'll put it there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and divide by the square root of 3 on both sides. Now remember, we can't have a square root on the bottom, so we're going to have to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3 to rationalize it. Now they do want our answer in simple, simplest radical form, so that's why we can't just divide it in our calculators, okay? So we get 24 in the square root of 3, and the bottom of the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 gives us the square root of 9. We know that the square root of 9 gives us 3, and 24 divided by 3 gives me 8, so 8 in the square root of 3. Okay. This is the side that, we're look, that they give us, the one across the 30, or that we just found the x. <clears throat> so that one is 8 in the square root of 3. And then the one across the 90 degree angle is my hypotenuse, the longest side. That's all we got to look for is we take 2 and we multiply it times x. And we know that x is 8 in the square root of 3. So when we go ahead and take 2 and multiply it times 8 in the square root of 3, that gives me 16 in the square root of 3. So we are almost done. They're asking us to find the perimeter, so now that we know all the sides, we're going to add all these up together. Okay. So for my perimeter, it's going to be 8 in the square root of 3 plus 24 plus 16 in the square root of 3. And we combine like terms, so the 24 doesn't have anything to combine with, plus the 8 in the square root of 3 and the 16 in the square root of 3 are considered like terms because they both have a square root of 3. So 16 plus 8 gives me 24 and the square root of 3. Okay. On this problem, they didn't give us any units, so we'll just leave it like that. And I believe that was the last problem. So that's it for me. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time.